We all know a metal zone can do this. <laughs> Can it do this? Hey everyone, and welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right. Metal Zone Challenge. We'll save you the comments, right? We'll save you the comments. A couple years back, Dan and I, in fact, it was many years back it was now, many years back. Um, did, we appeared in masks, in face masks, which you didn't see at that time. <laughs> masks weren't in common usage. Dan and I put them on and we sort of made a bit of a joke video about the Metal Zone. I don't know. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Hold me. Because <laughs> everyone Poking with a stick likes to poke fun at the metal zone, but we've grown up, we've moved on, and today's question, Dan, is. Today's question is, can we get the metal zone to sound like four of our fave pedals? Yeah, because whenever we feature, talk about, mention, whatever, the fabled boss metal zone, um, there's two types of comment. One is, oh my God, what a load of junk. Kids pedal, can't believe you're even featuring it. Second one is, actually, it's a really, really versatile, brilliantly voiced yeah. pedal that can do a lot of stuff. So we want to get into that. So if you're here for metal, Go watch something else. That's not what we do. Um, we're here just to see and talk about and learn a little bit more about the Metal Zone. Um, but first, some housekeeping. Please go to that pedal show store. Buy t-shirts, buy merch, buy pedals, buy stuff. It's how, predominantly how we fund this show and we appreciate your custom there. Indeed. Also, for our friends in America, we have that pedal shop, which is new and fantastic. So yes, if you want to buy merch, buy it from thatpedalshowstore.com. But if you're in the US and want to buy some pedals, why not head to thatpedalshop.com? Indeed, you'll see our faces there. It's new and spangly. And uh, yeah, do that, do Lovely. that. And subscribe, please subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. Okay, um, for, for regular viewers, yes, this is a new guitar. Yes, I'm really fizzy about it. It's the first day in, in the TPS studio. So I'll play it for a bit and then I'll put it away in a while. Indeed. <laughs> so while this is a, you know, we're gonna, the challenge is, can we make the metal zone sound like these four pedals? Really, what we're talking today about is how powerful EQ is when you combine EQ with gain. One of the reasons this has come up among general metal zone love is we did a band video um, a couple of weeks back, maybe even last week, a couple of weeks back, um, where we put uh, a Tube Screamer and a Boss SD-1 together and a lot of the comments were like well surely if you just had an EQ pedal after any overdrive you could make it sound like any overdrive it just so happens that the metal zone has a massively powerful EQ in it indeed and that is kind of what we're exploring exactly right? that exactly that great so let's have a listen to the metal zone quickly and just this is the sound that most people associate with the metal zone yeah Right. As once we are hearing that sound, I will then manipulate the EQ a bit and you can hear just how powerful it is.
I don't know if you saw that, but I, I had that sound. I went for the whammy bar. <laughs> Just in case you're in any doubt that the metal zone isn't making all that noise, here's the sound of our clean amps today. So that's the sound that most people will associate with the metal zone. That we know and love. Yeah. Um, well, we know. Just. <laughs> for the halibut, it's a Tone King Imperial Mark II and a Marshall 50 Watt Plexi, neither of which are overdriving at all. At all, they're yeah. both set fairly uh, clean, actually, for, yeah. specifically for this purpose. Okay, um, as you heard, utterly crazy EQ, yeah, and just the most minute of changes. So what you've got is bass and treble control, less bass, more bass, less treble, more treble, mm -hmm. but a parametric mid-range control. A semi-parametric. Okay, so and what that means is you can select the band of frequencies at which you want to bu uh, boost or cut. Now, if you're familiar with uh, mixing desk, you'll understand that principle. So you can say, uh, 2K, I want to cut you out. Yep. You can say, in the case of metal, we'll do this in a minute, um, anything from like 250 up to 800, we want to cut you out. Yep, yep. The reason, the reason it's not a fully parametric EQ is that we don't have control over the, the Q, the width of the, oh, okay. of the frequency. The, the, that width is set. Yeah. So to be a fully parametric, you need to be able to have control over the, the frequency range. Oh, interesting. The center point, the frequency range. But semi-parametric, you know, that Q is set. We can go up and down and then sweep that frequency. Nice. So Metal Zone is really interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, the design of it is actually genius. So. When your signal goes in, before it goes through the gain stage, it has this mid hump. Then after the gain stage, the bass and treble are added in, and then EQ is after that. So it it so the parametric the semi parametric mid is post everything, is it? Well, the the EQ yeah and the uh, parametric is post everything right, but after the, so you have this mid hump that goes into the gain stage. Yeah. After the gain stage, then they add all this bottom and top back in. And then after that is the EQ. EQ. Any idea what the mid hump is? Uh, the frequency. Uh, I, I we'll, did know. We'll research that and put yeah, it on yeah. the screen here. Um, again, we'll try not to tangent too much, but it is a bit impossible on this show. Fans of heavy music will know that one surefire way to a really classic heavy guitar sound is to use something like a dual rectifier or PV6505, 5150, those kind of amps, mm. and hit it with a tube screamer. And my the reason I asked you what the frequency was is because I'm, the tube screamer I'm just wondering if yeah, it's right. sort of doing that pre-EQ job a little bit. Well, I think, I think after the gain stage, where you've got, um, so the mid-range is going into the gain, and then after that you've got bass and treble. So basically, you've got this platform where you've got all the mids and all the bass and all the treble. But because the mid is pre-gain, yeah. those frequencies are going to, as you hit harder in the guitar, they're going to a limit first. Yeah. And then, because you because the EQ is so powerful, you know, it only really matters where those the centers of those, of those frequency are if everything's set at noon. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so, and the other thing is Metal Zone is a hard clipper. Um, so we've got back-to-back -back diodes after uh, after the op amp. But it's important to know that with the metal zone, the amount of gain in it, it's like the minimum amount of gain is times two. So the even even at the minimum amount of gain, those clipping diodes are on. Are on. But we'll at, hear that in a sec. But at the maximum gain, it's something like 250. <laughs> and the op amp is actually distorting. Oh, really? At that point. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting a mixture of the, the diodes just caving down and everything, and the op amp as well. So for anyone who doesn't understand that, so the op amp is the um, amplifying bit, operational amplifier, also called an IC sometimes, integrated circuit, right? And that gives you your amplification. And in most overdrive pedals, certainly most overdrive pedals of these natures, 
uh, you then get something called clipping diodes, which creates the distortion. Yep. And where those clipping diodes are in the circuit depends whether it's a hard or a soft clipper. That's what he's just been talking about. Maybe we can manage a diagram there. Very good. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, so the question is then, how close can we get to these, you know, classic sounding things? So awesome. Let's um metal people turn off now. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to grab the strat, yeah, and then we'll go through them. What you mean, my new strat? You want to grab your new strat, my new custom shop sixty two strat in fire mist gold, which is slightly annoying because um, it should have been shoreline. Really, they didn't introduce. Uh, fire mist until 64, 65. So is it an, an anachronism? It is. Right. Um, I guess in certain lights it wouldn't, that wouldn't look that different from Shoreline. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's also in sort of somewhere between E and E flat, so... Okay. That's good. <laughs> right, let's have a listen. Let's start with... Nothing. Let's start with the rat. I'm just going to turn the reverb down a tiny bit. Ah, oh, so nice though. It is nice, but it just means we'll add another eight minutes onto the video waiting for the tails. Okay. <laughs> so what I'll do, I'll get you to play, yep. and I'm going to manipulate the metal zone and see how close I can get to it. Okay. Um, I am going to pick up another guitar in a minute, because uh, I think as much as I love strats, I do think the audience might be a little bit annoyed at hearing a strat with these higher gain oh, pedals. Oh no, this is great. This is, no, this is perfect. It's <laughs> okay. perfect. All right. I'm, I'm thinking of you. <laughs> Ready? Well, I'm thinking of me. All right. <laughs> uh... Here we go. Obviously, edit, don't yeah, yeah, keep yeah. all this in. Just keep going. It's just EQ is so true.
it's pretty good. It's not bad in certain areas of the neck. Yeah. I, I'm already having a heart attack at all the masking I'm going to have to do through the edit of that. But um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I tell you what, so the, the rat has got such a wicked cue on it. Yeah. Um, at that point where it's nasal. Yeah. I mean, bear in mind, we didn't adjust the rat, the filter on the rat there. So okay. rat. Um, rat one, metal zone nil. <laughs> rat one, metal zone nil. Okay. Um, <laughs> For the rat sound. Let's do the, let's try the ADR one then. Okay. All right. Please, Your please, turn. you play. Yeah. So it's really interesting. EQ is nearly there. That's probably a bit bright and maybe a bit fizzy, but there's still, even with the gain down that low. Yeah. Gains, um, if you, just in case you can't see it, the gain's at like 8 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, again, the Nobles has got, we talk about it as a flat sound in overdrive, but it does have a, a, a lovely, especially with the spectrum control around there a bit, it's got a little bit of a nose on it. And also, you can hear the way the ODL1 breaks up. Yeah. It's not just an EQ thing. It's the way it, it limits. Um, oh, here we go. Which is very different than the metal zone. The metal zone is, it's distorted the whole time. You know what I mean? Whereas the, the ODL1 has got that, um, it's more dynamic. Actually, just do distorts. roll your volume down then and let's have a listen to, little listen to that. Okay, seeing as we've got um, pedals we're not familiar with, why don't we have a guitar we're not familiar with? This is Malcolm's SG, uh, not that Malcolm, um, with mini humbuckers from the mid-1970s. Please work. I need to put my own strings on this guitar. Uh, I think we got closer with that one. Yeah. Okay. Muff. Muff. So this will be really interesting. Um, talking about the the uh, metal zone is a flat out hard clipper, right? Yeah. In every way you can possibly think about it. The muff is really interesting because we've got cascading gain stages. So 
the attack of the note is very soft on a muff. So this is going to be a real challenge. <laughs> Very nice. It's really hard because what you're hearing, what I'm hearing there is quite a lot of bass in the in the in the muffletta, but it's not kind of 80 100 hertz bass like the kind of bass you would associate with a 4x12 cab or indeed lower than that, which is what you would associate with the resonance of a 412 cab. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's there nonetheless and it's got this nose on it and again we're back to that being able to alter the cue of that mid-range because my assumption so the first thing I was hearing was not very much high end at all right but actually when you start playing there is it's in there it's just way up there it's way up there and it's so limited yeah yeah the way so the way those gain stages work everything by the time it gets through the last gain stage yeah everything is shut down you so know? you've got a, you've got a bunch of choices you know do you keep the treble low and boost the high mids up to the point where that treble frequency is like 10, 12 K mm. or do you choose the mid control to boost the nose of it, which is very definitely sort of, I don't know, somewhere between five and 800 Hertz, right. that very nosy, maybe even up to one K actually. But. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So it's just the attack that feels different. Yeah. Because you know, the attack is so is so soft on the big muff. And the game feels different and too. The, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So this is really interesting in that we can get the EQ there or thereabouts, mm. but in actual fact, the the nature yeah. of the overdrive, you know, is is the thing that's the hardest to cop. Yeah, I, I think just to make the point, we're not sat here going these things sound exactly the same. They really, really don't. Yeah, yeah. They're what we're saying is we're ballparking them. We're getting close to it. And I rather suspect in the recording they'll be further apart than we're experiencing here. Right, because in the room it bang on. We're <laughs> they're just <laughs> nailing it. They're in they're they're playing the same sport. They are. Yeah. They and, are. and at times they veer into the same ballpark. <laughs> Purely by accident. Yeah. yeah. Now this is going to be really interesting. Okay. The archer. A clon style overdrive. It's got more bottom end than the than my clon, than your yeah. clon. Um, but it is a hard clipper as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's. So, if I had a um, a clony type thing, this is how I would set it. Little bit of treble, plenty of level, not too much gain. So it's kind of being used as a clean boost. So 
let me just see. If it was my clone, that's how I would set it. Let's see if it, if I'm getting the, the right thing out of it here. Bang on. Doesn't quite have the nose of my clone. No. Doesn't have that... Um, the upper trebly stuff as well. So I might just pump the tone a bit more. So that's how I would use my clonny. We will get some more gain on in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if the metal zone has that little gain in it. Minimum gain. Min that's is, that's is the least amount of gain you can possibly get from yep. this pedal. We know that some of you like to run your metal zones in the um, effects loop of your amp. Right. Uh, for a boost. Cool. Um, but it won't. We just proved that this one. Just put it on the other mode a minute, Dan. It's got the mode switch there. <laughs> mud mode. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, that's the standard mode. <laughs> We've got it in the custom mode for this, this we demo. Do. We yeah, do. yeah. Um, okay, so we know it won't do that. Let's crank the gain on the Archer then. Right. Um, as many of you will know, uh, Josh from JHS loves to crank his clon as a brilliant overdrive pedal, and why not? It's a great clipper. <laughs> Hitting you in the right in the ear hole. Right there, in the ear it? hole. How is yeah. it? It's really, huh? That's <laughs> great. It sounds really good. It's got that classic, you know, honky, punchy thing. But it sounds amazing. That strat sounds amazing. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Let us begin. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, there's a, brit a more brittle edge to the gain in the metal zone. Yes. Um, and even with that little EQ, 
It almost feels like the nose is overco overcooked a bit. Yeah, right. Just play for a sec. This is where you're really missing that cue yeah. for the mid-range thing yeah. because we've got this spike, yeah. but we can't widen that out. So the, I don't know about this particular clon type, but my clon has got a push at 1K and it's got somewhere between three and four, it's got a little kick as well. So you're trying to do both of those things. So if your EQ centers mm. aren't in the right place or the cue's not right, and the cue being the width, so if you push at one, how much 1.25 and... 0.75 does it push as well? Yeah. How wide is the is the amount that it pushes up in the EQ curve? Which is to come back to the top of the show, why a lot of people are saying if you just stick an EQ pedal after your overdrive pedal, you can approximate pretty much anything. Sure. Interesting. What I found interesting about that though is the game felt closer. The the attack yeah. felt closer. Yeah, and you think that's because of the hard clipping? I think yeah, because yeah. the diodes are in the same well, sim very similar place. Yeah. Um yeah, really, really interesting. Certainly extremely versatile, but that, you know, it almost feels like you've got that, you've got the dual concentric pot there with the, the, the semi-parametric mid on it. Yeah. It feels like if you could spread out like that, that much yeah, travel yeah. across the whole knob, that would be enough. It's so sensitive. It's crazy. Well, we yeah. had Simon on, didn't we, from Biffy? Yeah. And he was saying, you know, it has to be no oh, too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that okay. That was really interesting. I thought that I did think we'd get a bit closer on yeah. something that. Yeah, I was when I was setting this up. I I had the um, the Princeton and the Marshall and the little uh, ten inch speakers in the other room. Yeah, and I definitely got closer. Um, but now hearing them like you know large the largeness of these of this rig at large fidelity, and you can hear it's like oh okay. Um, yeah, but it, but nonetheless. Yeah. Impressive that we're able to get that close with a metal zone. There's one final sound I want to do. My favourite sound of the day was the ODR1 and the Archer stacked, right? Right. Um, so and I think this is a nice place to be because what I was getting off the strat anyway is that enough gain, but also the sort of harmonic yeah. edge to it. So if we just turn uh, the ODR1 on a sec, um, so... That's a nice noise. The archer by itself.
Sorry, that, killer. That, that is, is a... very self-indulgent. And for those of you who don't like bluesy playing, apologies. Oh, stop it. That's that's my home territory. It's beautiful. That's the kind of guitar sound that makes me go, oh yeah, baby. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, the guitar sounds amazing. If you just listen to the telly on that, it will probably sound a bit nosy. Right. Honky, right? Honky. Really, really Sorry, honky. I've, I've used the word nose about 50,000 times in this video. What I mean is a mid-range peak. Uh, and that, when we talk about nosy, we're talking about frequencies, those which are boosted by... Make it sound a little bit like this. <laughs> and, yeah, and it sounds nasal, can sound nasal. Um, it, boost anything from like, I don't know, s somewhere around 600 up to around 1K, and in there you'll find the mid-range nose of the Tube Screamer and the Clon. Yeah. So what is great about that sound, though, is it, again, back in the two and four, it gives you some really nice harmonic stuff going on there. I picked that note entirely at random. Wow, that's wicked. And, it, and you get into that harmonic feedback, right? Yeah. So we're going to try and replace the ODR one with the with the. Middle no, zone. we're going to see if that sound will come out of the metal zone. <laughs> okay. Come on, Dan. Right. Okay. All right. All right. It's really, really good. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, try position two. That is killer. Not only did I th think it sounded very similar, 
We could have done a bit more work on the high end, but it, not only did it sound very similar, it was great to play. Right. You, you got to do it. You got to try it. What am I pressing? Between eight and 12. Right. So the Metal Zone couldn't do all the sounds I didn't much like today. It could absolutely do the one that I like the best. That is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. All the harmonics were there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Happy That's days. a win. That's a win. So all your archers and uh, ODR ones <laughs> in, the, in the bin. <laughs> Very good. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. That was a lot of fun. It was. Um, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, apparently, um, we're shallow and narcissistic and we really... <laughs> Really like that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, totally narcissistic. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if you want to support the show, please head over to thatpedalshowstore.com and check out our merch. Uh, this is what funds the show. We don't take any money from uh, any manufacturers to, you know, for this stuff. The merch is what funds the show. Indeed, predominantly so. Uh, as does that pedal shop in the US. If you want to buy some pedals. Indeed in the US. Brilliant. Massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon as well. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and of course, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is. Would be Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey, with whom we did a live VCQ yesterday. A lot of fun it was too. That was awesome fun. <laughs> uh, our dear friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Indeed. So have a fantastic week and we will see you on Monday for viewers, comments and questions and would love to know uh, what you thought and what your experiences with your Metal Zones are. Indeed. Brilliant. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.